Well, greetings! <laughs> As you can see here, I have a 19-inch Orion television, and we're watching some nice super high impact here. So, you may be asking yourself, uh, what in tarnation is going on here? Well, I just acquired this from my uncle, who had this in his garage sitting there for 15 years. I had, we talked about old CRT pick, uh, TVs, and I said, I, I collect these for arcade purposes. He goes, oh, I got one in the garage. If you want it, you can have it. Oh, okay. So he, I said, sure. He gave it to me, and as you can see, it looks gorgeous, beautiful. Not a single thing wrong with it. But you may be wondering, how am I doing this? Well, uh, hey, how you, how you doing? <laughs> so here is how this works. Basically, almost every... 19 inch tube or even 25 tube are all going to be completely compatible with arcade monitors. It just depends on which one is specifically compatible. And I'll plug my light in here so you can see. So basically I have a K7000 directly drop in replacing the original analog board that came with this television. And what this is, this is an Orion television and uh, I guess I'll show you the model number of the of the set is TV1928 Alpha. So if you acquire one of these, uh, it's an absolute 100% drop in replacement for K7000 and it works perfectly. So to give you a little bit more detail here is that um, if you find yourself a 19 or 25 inch old television, I'd say it's about 99, 90, 98% sure that you're only going to be able to use a low ohm chassis with it. Now what I mean by that is the K7000, the uh, most of the Cortex, the universal chassis, the low ohm rating chassis for these monitors. And of course they're all going to be standard resolution. Uh, and ideally what you would do is you would buy your television and verify your ohms are low ohm reading on the yoke and I'll measure those in a moment and show you what I mean. You would buy this and decase it and just slave it right into your arcade monitor frame, hook up your original chassis and be about your business. In half an hour you can have this decased and swapped out and have your machine back up and running. It works very well. And then again, as you can see, it not only does it work well, it's great. I mean, the picture tube, a picture tube is a picture tube, ideally. As long as it's a CR23 with a 6.3 volt heater, which almost all of them you're going to come across are going to be like that, and you have the right ohm readings, uh, it should work. So I was able to acquire this from my uncle and sure enough I tested the ohms. They read spot on. Well not spot on. I'll show you in a minute. So I'm pretty close to what the 7000 is, is supposed to have and what it likes to use. And uh, yeah, it's working perfectly. So let me show you what I mean. Let me get on the overhead and we'll discuss what the right settings are and what to check for when you get these picture tubes and these old televisions I should say what to look for and how to know if they'll be compatible with a, ch with a chassis and which chassis it'll be compatible with. So hang on one second. Okay, so I have disconnected the yoke. I have obviously turned off the, the system here. And the only thing that you need to salvage, or not salvage, I should say, the only thing you actually need to hook up for testing is the uh, anode cup, uh, the ground, the dag ground from the tube, and the yoke. That's the only parts that you need to re retain from this setup. The actual an old analog board and everything from the original television, you can just toss in the garbage or save it if you want. Maybe the flyback is something you want to save or parts or pieces. But for all intents and purposes, all you need is to just decase the tube from the plastic shell here and put it in your arcade monitor frame and go about your business. Uh, but to find out if what's the, what tube is compatible with which chassis, the yoke is what's most important. And this originally began life uh, as one intact connector plugged into the old analog board from, or I, I refer to it as analog board in a, in a television, but a chassis, you know, it, the old chassis here for the television. It was plugged in to that, and I unplugged it, and uh, when I plugged it into here for testing, my image was upside down. So if you ever, uh, this, this should be a whole separate video unto itself, what I'm about, about to explain here, but, so basically you have, this is your yoke connector. Now normally it's, it's uh, you know one connector like this well for like for instance here I plugged it in and my image was upside down so the only way to fix that is to well you can physically turn your monitor around but who wants to do that the easiest way is just take your yoke connector if it's not already and just cut it in half and then trim up your pieces and you take it and you just you flip it so basically the green and the yellow 
are for vertical, for up and down, and red and blue are for horizontal left and right. So let's say you plug this in and your image is upside down. Well, you have to break your connector in half if it's not already and take your yellow and green and just turn it around and plug it back in. That'll flip your image. If your image is backwards, you take your red and your blue and break it off of there and just take it and turn it around. So red and blue will flip your horizontal and green and yellow will flip your vertical. That's how you resolve an image that's upside down or backwards. So in this instance, I plugged it in and my vertical was upside down, so I had to break it in half and turn the vertical. But the most important thing with that aside is the readings. Now the 7000s and, and the like, you know, most of the Cortex and the universal chassis, they all like the low ohm reading, which for horizontal, it likes about 2 ohms. And for vertical, it likes around between 8 and 10. I've seen it anywhere between 5.3 and, and 10. But if you get much below, I'd say about 7, uh, you're going to end up with an image that's either too small or too tall. And there's not going to be any way to resolve it. Uh, so you, I, but I've never seen one. I've never seen a low ohm yoke on an on an actual consumer television that wasn't right around the butter zone. So for instance, if we get our meter here and we go ahead and turn it on, and we take our yoke readings, our vertical again is the yellow and the green. So if we go to yellow and green, it should be somewhere between eight and ten is what your ideal reading should be. As we can see here, we got nine point five. So we're right smack dab in the middle between 8 and 10. Eh, we're up 0.6 off, but you get the idea. We're, we're between 8 and 10. So we're good on vertical. For your horizontal red and blue, you should have around 2. Now for this particular one, we're reading like 3.5 or so. Uh, well, I don't know why it's reading 4. Earlier it was 3.5. Maybe if we wait a minute. Ideally, you'd want around 2, but this isn't too far off. Now you saw it was just fine. I had a full square image. It wasn't too wide. It wasn't too narrow. Uh, the width coil is right adjusted in the middle, so there's no problem there. So ideally, though, you'd want around two two ohms, not four. But four is just fine for this app for this application because we saw that it worked fine. I had a square image, full size, no big deal. But ideally, you'd want around two. So two for horizontal and eight to ten for vertical. But this is actually okay. I mean, you know, you've got some tolerances, but as long as it doesn't as long as it doesn't read you know, like twelve or fifteen, <laughs> then you're not going to be able to use this. So. That's the most important part is to make sure it's reading. Now, if you actually take your, most all of the horizontal are all going to be the same, you know, 2 ohms, 3 ohms, 4 ohms, what have you. But the vertical is the one that's important because the high ohm, the high ohm ones like the K4900 and the G07 and the likes, the like of those with the high ohm readings are around 40, no, I'm sorry, 58. They're usually between, I've seen most of the 4900s ring between uh, 53 and 60 ohms on the vertical. Uh, the low ohm K7000s and the like are around 8 to 10, and the high ohm resistance for the 4900, G07, and those kind are all in the high, like 53 to 60. So if you, for instance, if we were to t open this up and read this and it read 53 to 60, you would not be able to use a 7000. You'd have to use a 4900 or G07. Uh, but in, let's say, for instance, if I wanted to use this tube for a, a G07, if I had a G07 that had a bad tube and I wanted to use this tube, you absolutely could, but you would have to t remove the yoke, remove the rings, and put your G07 yoke off of your old bad tube onto this one and redo your convergence and your purity and everything. You would have to do an actual physical yoke swap. Uh, the tube itself is going to be absolutely compatible with the G07 and, and all of the other ones. The tubes are all compatible across the board for the most part. As long as it's got a CR23... Uh, internal work, as long as it's a CR23, and as long as it has a 6.3 heater voltage, you can pretty much use these tubes for any arcade 19 inch or 25 inch out there that exists. Uh, the most important part is the yoke. So if I, if I was trying to use this to replace a 4900 or a G07, I would have to take the yoke off of it, off of my bad tube and take this off and slide my, my original yoke onto this one and use this as a spare for something later down the road. So you would actually have to do a full yoke and ring swap and reconvergence and purity adjustments and that all, all that entails and all the fun that goes along with that. But for this particular instance, all of our readings are perfect for, well, relatively, for a low ohm reading chassis, which is a 7000. So uh, again, for testing, all you need is your anode, your second anode hooked up, your DAG ground, and your yoke connection. And it's basically the same as if this was in an actual arcade chassis or actual arcade um, frame, if you will. So if we hook up our vertical again backwards, because it was upside down when it's hooked up 
correctly originally. Then we hook up our horizontal again to correct the way it should have been originally. So right now we are green, yellow, blue, red, and originally it was uh, yellow, green, blue, red. And like that it was back, it was upside down I should say. So now we have it flipped around. So uh, let me get back off the overhead here, turn the light off, we'll turn it back on and test it one more time just to see and verify. Uh, so we will, uh, hang on one moment here, hang on. Okay, here we go to test it one more time. All right, comes right on. There you go. So I just wanted to make a quick brief video on how to, you know, install this stuff and what's general, just a general overview. If you find yourself a 19-inch television, how to test it and tell a, if it'll even work with a arcade monitor chassis, and B, which chassis it'll work with, based off how to read it and everything. And like I say, if you get one that you're replacing a high ohm and, and, and this is a low ohm, you'll have to do a yoke swap, uh, but the tube itself should work just fine. If you get lucky and need it for a 7000 and it has a low ohm reading, you're good to go, drop in replacement, hook it up, swap out the tube, and you're good to go. So, yeah, it's nice and beautiful. Let's turn out the light so you can actually see. It looks fantastic. Nice, vibrant colors. It's super crisp. Yeah, just perfect. If we acknowledge that. Uh, it's a bit too green, but yeah, look at that. Glorious. So, uh, you can get lucky sometimes. Uh, let's see if I can get this plugged back in without shocking myself. Uh, come on. Uh, nope. and do this in the dark here there we go so yeah you can uh, get very lucky on this I got this for basically free from my uncle but I mean I worst case scenario I can just uh, decase this and put it in a frame of a tube that, that goes out and uh, go right back to uh, being good so thanks for watching hopefully you learned something if you ever have ever wondered about this or questions hopefully this helps you out uh, if you find yourself a 19 or 25 inch tube absolutely grab it absolutely grab it because it's going to be compatible with at least something and you'll be able to get yourself up and going again because these are getting more scarce and more scarce by the day. So again, I appreciate it. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. If you have questions, let me know and uh, we'll see you on the next video.